Well, hello everyone. Thank you for being here. This is Byron King with Investor Intel coming from Chile, Toronto uh, at the PDAC conference, so the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada, the annual mining conference, the world's largest mining conference. Uh, I have uh, with me today, I have Mel Sanderson. Uh, Mel is uh, from Arizona. Mel is the president of a company called American Rare Earths, and we will talk about that in a moment, but because Mel is too bashful, I will tell you uh, that Mel is a, uh, has quite a background. Uh, she was a United States Foreign Service officer with the U.S. State Department, which is a serious job, uh, if you know anything about that. Uh, she is faculty at the University of Arizona Thunderbird School of Management. Uh, she is a former uh, executive with a mining company you may have heard of called Freeport McMoran. Uh, and she is an acknowledged expert in uh, the ESG arena, the environmental sustainability and governance uh, arena. She has been a consultant to many different companies. She has, of course, advised the United States government and uh, Freeport. Now, now that I've thoroughly embarrassed her, uh, hello, Mel. It is great to be with you. Thank you so much, Byron. I, I admit I am blushing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> very quickly, tell the audience out there, what is this American rare earths thing? It sounds like it does rare earths, but tell, tell us about it. By golly, good guess. Good guess? Yes, we are actually working to develop two of what we believe are going to be the largest rare earth deposits in North America. One of those is located in Arizona, in La Paz County, and you'll never guess, we named it La Paz. La Paz. The other is in Wyoming, not far from Laramie, Wyoming, and it's called Halleck Creek. We started work on La Paz a couple of years ago, and we did produce a JORC report on one portion of that deposit, in which we have demonstrated 175,000 tons of, of total rare earth, and very good presence of scandium. This year in October, we're going to do some more drilling in a part of La Paz we haven't even explored yet because we kind of sort of suspect that there's a lot more in the ground. Okay, well, I happen to have done a little bit of homework on this, and the, the mineral that you're looking for, it's a, it's a, it's a, a type of silicate called alanite. Uh, I happen to know a few things about that. If you're, I don't want to get all crystallographic and mineralogical on you, but it, it tends to hold uh, rare earth elements such as, you know, presidemium, neodymium, the magnet stuff. Uh, scandium, which you mentioned, which is a, an astonishing uh, element that makes aluminum about five times stronger than, 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 than otherwise. So uh, now you mentioned the word jork. That's an Australian version of a 43101. Okay. And so uh, tell us a little bit more. What, what, have you, what have you drilled up? How deep have you gone? And you know, do, do you have a drilling program for this coming season and the summer and what have you? Yeah, I actually, want to, I actually want to talk about Hallett Creek in Wyoming oh, sure, go ahead, yeah. because that is now our flagship project. We have uh, just completed an extensive drilling program. We went down 175 meters on our deepest holes. Mm -hmm. Our initial assay results have gotten us very excited because what we're seeing is a consistent distribution to depth and um, we're seeing high initial percentage returns. Obviously, we haven't finished the assay process, so this is still speculative, but exciting, mm -hmm. that are indicating that we could have over 25% presence concentration of neodymium and praseodymium that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we will be coming out with the 43101 probably the end of March or very early in April. And we intend from there to launch straight into the scoping study and we're angling to get out our, our preliminary economic assessment either in December or very early in the first quarter of next year. So this is a, a transition year for ARR and uh, we're really preparing ourselves for becoming what our strategic vision is, which is to be the mines to metals producer for North America. Look out, MP materials. <laughs> Watch out, MP. Well, now, here in the United States, in the past you know, two years or so, we've had several different um, uh, acts of legislation by the U.S. Congress, you know, the, the, Inve the uh, Inflation Reduction Act and the, uh, the investment, uh, various investment acts and such. But it, uh, and, it, and it has to do with 
trying to create or trying to kickstart a, uh, a, a clean, green uh, industrial system in the U.S., uh, you know, producing things like rare earths as well as, you know, electrify things. And, and, and so you want to be in the sweet spot of that, I take it. We absolutely do, but I have to say that um, the, the legislation, many people would say that the legislation has been surprising coming as it has from a Democratic administration. But I think that there is strong bipartisan support, both that growing these mines in all of these capacities is essential for the national defense as well as for developing the green economy. And this is why we have seen a very forward-leaning posture by the American government, which is historically not very prone to interacting closely with the private sector. We have seen, for instance, that the government is providing funding to build three processing plants in America, two of which will be built by Linus Corporation in Texas, and MP Materials is building their own. We, of course, are working right now on a greener, cleaner strand of research. We're cooperating with both the Department of Defense and the Department of Energy and working directly with Lawrence Livermore Labs and the Critical Materials Institute and their nine university research partners on three research strands. The first of which would involve engineered bacteria and that bacteria would be engineered in such a way as to bind with a specific element. So let's just say the neodymium and be able to pull that neodymium out of the mix. The second is an enzyme research, does the same kind of thing. The argument is the bacteria would have to be regenerated very quickly, so not a big cost savings. Enzymes would last longer. The third is also working on enzyme separation, but with the addition of capturing carbon molecules leading to carbon net neutrality. So we consider that we are hopefully leading the way to cleaner, greener processing. If you have other questions or want to learn more about American Rare Earths, they have a website, they have a presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Byron, and thank you, Investor Intel, for this opportunity.